Hey everybody, my name is Sam. And I'm Angela, and welcome to our channel. Welcome back to the next video in our playlist of installing a multi-zone mini split in our mobile home. It's a lot of M's there. Mum, mum, mum. <laughs> in today's video, we're gonna take you through the electrical installation and setting the outdoor unit. Let's go. The first step for us on this actual legit install is actually getting our power connected or ran to wherever our condenser is going to be which is a unit that sits outside of the home so we have ourselves a lego box full of tools and everything we have flashlight scissors tape don't tell mommy we took the scissors out of the kitchen and we also have some special things as far as when we're going to cut into the underbelly of the home and seal it back up First off is this spray adhesive. I have not used this yet, but my research led me to that this is the best thing for re-gluing patches in mobile home underbellies. The other thing is this, it's actually some of the original mobile homes underbelly synthetic woven fabric stuff. I have this for patching up any holes that are down there. It's as easy as cutting what you need, spraying the adhesive and sticking it to it, and it's supposed to work well. All right, Elijah has the GoPro and a flashlight. He is going to be filming all the work down there underneath the house. Let's go ahead and go do this and get it over with. All right, Elijah, we're going all the way to where the gray pipe goes up into the floor because that's where the power goes into the panel. And that's where we're going to look for a place. We have reached the point where the power comes from our outdoor meter base, turns up and into the floor. I'm going to open this area up and reach my hand up there to see if I can find the wire that runs from our furnace circuit over to where the electric furnace used to be because that's the wire we're going to reuse and run out through the wall that way. All right, I can see the wire. It's just about two feet up into the underbelly. I don't know if you guys can see it there's a gray wire back in there. That is what we're after. Here's the wire we need. Now we're going to pull this out because this runs all the way where our furnace used to be. Jeez. It's probably about a $300 worth of copper nowadays. There we go. Shoo. Angela is working on cutting the hole from outside in through the wall of the underpinning or the basement of the house here. So while she does that, I'm going to go ahead and cut our patch fabric and start sealing up the underbelly where all this stuff comes through. All right, we're going to get our spray glue. And let's read some instructions here. Okay. Pretty much shake and bake. All right, it says to spray it, wait a minute or so, and then press it in place. All right, everybody, it is all patched up, closed up as good as we can get it. This adhesive and patch kit is awesome. You know adhesive is strong whenever you accidentally pick up mud clumps off the ground. <laughs> but it looks great. It is totally sealed up. I mean, not 100%. Obviously, I could stick my finger in around the pipes and everything. But that's so much better than what it was and is great. 
So here's our wire that we have run down. I'm going to go along this conduit and I wish I had some zip ties to zip tie it, but I have duct tape. So, hey, good old fashioned duct tape. That's good. I'm going to tape it in place and we're going to work our way that way, which is towards the way we're going to install the mini split and run the wire out through the basement wall. That's it. Okay. Well, that was a lot of fun being under the house and doing all of that. I guess it could have been a lot worse, but I'm glad it's over. I will say this, that patch fabric is awesome. <laughs> it is great. We're gonna have to get some more of that to finish all the other little bits and bobbins, but wow, good stuff. If you're looking to patch your mobile home's underbelly, I would highly recommend that. I was obviously surprised at how well that worked. You never know when you get something like that if it is, if it is going to work, so. True. Very true. So I got to say it was very helpful having you outside to just drill the hole. It really saved on my crawl around time. <laughs> you drilled the hole and I fetched the wire through. So thank you, thank you. With the under the house work done and the wire run outside, we could then go ahead and take the forms off of our concrete pad. Elijah is eager to help with that one, so we'll give him a hammer and let him go. And then we can go ahead and start wiring up the service disconnect box. These bread nails are pretty tough. People may not know what a service disconnect is, so tell them what you've learned about service disconnects and location. It's kind of like a light switch that you can pull out the little fuse piece in it and it will have no power going to it. That way you don't have to go all the way to your fuse box to turn it off or your breaker box or whatever. Mm -hmm. To turn it off, you can just pull that out and it totally disconnects it. It's really good if you need to work on something, do wiring, that type of thing. Yep, it is a safety feature. In most places it is required by law and it is, yeah, I would, yeah, it's a requirement that I agree with. It's nice to know that if I'm ever out there working on this, even if I flip a breaker inside the house, I know no one's gonna touch it because I'm right there next to the fuse and I pulled it out. Mm -hmm. So you do need to make sure that you space the hole coming from underneath your house about 18 inches off the side of your unit um, to allow enough room for your disconnect box as well as the whip, which is the electrical cords coming out of the disconnect box going to your outdoor unit. Mm -hmm. Having that allows you to replace the outdoor unit if you ever need to. It's not locked in with a rigid connection and gives you flexibility in the future. Right. Whew. Thank you, gravity. That was a lot easier. The one perk to living on a hill. <laughs> Nice. All right, you said you have the handle on your end? Yeah. I don't, so let's just spin it while it's still on the cardboard. Oh, uh, okay. I'm gonna read through the quick startup guide just to get refreshed on the installation. I've been watching most every YouTube video out there as far as how to install a multi-unit, as well as reading through the actual full installation manual and everything from the manufacturer as I waited for 
today or to arrive. So I would recommend doing the same, but I'm gonna go ahead and brief myself with a quick startup guide and then we'll continue on with the next steps. Okay, well let's say step one is do all the stuff inside. Step four is place the outside condenser unit. Well, we went backwards. Um, hoses, hoses. Step seven is to do the electrical work. Okay, well. We went backwards. I guess we've done as much as we can now. Hey, we have unboxed the condenser unit and set it out here. Now it's time to go inside the house and actually mount our air handlers inside our rooms and drill holes through our home. All right, it's gonna be a little bit of a cliffhanger or a teaser, I'm sorry, but I wanna go ahead and stop this particular video right here. We've had a lot of information in this and what we're getting ready to do, which is the indoor air handler installation, is another big chunk of info. And we don't wanna have you guys glazing over over an hour long video. No. <laughs> <laughs> we were very excited to get this part done as we are very excited to get our units put in so we can enjoy some cooler air in the house. Um, it has been like 87, 88 degrees in the house, mm -hmm. even with fans going and everything. Mm -hmm. So even at nine o'clock at night. So we are very excited to get this in. So please continue watching if you're interested in it to see us continue this project. If you have any comments, leave them below. We'd love to read them. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time on The Homestead. See ya. Bye. Most commonly, you would probably tie into your existing meter base or outdoor power unit for a mobile home. Power unit. Oh my gosh. Oh, stabbed my back already. Yeah, that's good. In today's video, we're gonna take you through the full electrical portion Portion. <laughs> Are you getting Irish? <laughs> no, I'm getting redneck.